Hello. I'm a chemistry professor with the University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Pennsylvania. And what I want to do is show you a little bit of the research that I'm doing on the Maillard reaction. It's pronounced Maillard in English. Maillard was a French organic chemist who first investigated this process. And I'm tying this reaction to my research in chemical ecology. Now the Maillard reaction itself is it's actually a very important process in the preparation of food, cooking of foods, and it can best be described as a reaction of sugars, simple sugars, disaccharides. Uh, I work right now with uh, the pentoses, ribose, xylose, glucose, a hexose, fructose, fruit sugar, a hexose, and uh, various amino acids. Now, the reaction itself is actually, it's a complex reaction. It starts with imine formation, carbon-nitrogen double bond between the amino acid of choice and the sugar, ketone, or aldehyde, and that's followed by an amidori rearrangement, which yields an amino ketone. At that point, the uh, sugar portion with the polyhydroxy component will undergo dehydration, cyclization, polymerizations, very, very complex, and you get a uh, bouquet, I see a typo there, you get a bouquet of aromas, odors, as the reaction proceeds. And it will vary, the odors that you actually detect will vary in complexity, intensity, uh, depending on the sugar amino acid uh, pairing. Now, the reaction, the Maillard, is involved in the browning of foods and is closely associated with the caramelization pathway, although it's not identical because caramelization is only the heating of sugars. Here we have amino acids and sugars. Now, a typical reaction, and where I uh, generally conduct the reactions, is at 80 to 100 degrees Celsius for 2 to 10 minutes. Left heating, eventually a brownish-black solid forms, melaninoids related to melanin pigment in humans and other life forms, which may be uh, a carcinogenic material in the GI tract. So go easy on barbecued food while we're uh, making this presentation. Now, the chemical ecology I'm doing, I'm actually interested in generating Maillard mixtures and subjecting the material to chemical identification analysis via first continuous extraction. You have a complex mixture, it's in water, and then I will attempt to extract out anything that's soluble in a given solvent. More about that in a few minutes. And uh, then upon concentration, uh, the gas chromatographic mass spectral study of what has been extracted out of this complex mixture. You see, I'm also interested in offering the mixtures, the Maillard mixtures, to my test animals. I work with the American cockroach, fiddler crabs, and land hermit crabs, and I'm interested in how they will be attracted or repelled by such materials as I offer them. And uh, in the case of the melaninoid solids, then I would uh, make pellets of those and uh, place it in the terrarium, aquarium, or crab aquarium, depending on the uh, life form I'm studying. And um, I have a webcam set up. We'll give you the information on that later. And you can uh, log in and actually see the work we're doing 24-7. Now here's video one. It'll be a little noisy because of the fume hood. I use a uh, popcorn uh, popper, an air popper, to do the reaction. Sugar and amino acid in a small amount of aqueous bicarbonate. That's the air popper you hear. Now watch the reaction in the crucible. 
We go up to 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. Mix it up with the thermometer. You can see it turning color already. It generates odors. Not unpleasant. Smells like cooked food. Getting darker. It's about 80 degrees, 90 degrees right there. The bicarbonate that I put in uh, places the reaction on the alkaline side around pH 8 to 9. This is the process that would take place when foods are being cooked. The odors will change as heating, the time of heating uh, increases. Okay, I'll shut it down there. And you can see the Maillard mixture. Now, if I let that go a few more minutes, that would turn into a solid. Uh, this still uh, continuing to uh, boil down. Sometimes I'll leave it overnight with air passing over it in a fume hood to uh, dry it out. Too hot to the touch. Got to grab it with tongs. Each amino acid sugar partner will yield a uh, different chemical physical characteristics. The reaction of proline, amino acid proline with uh, xylose sugar, a pentose, yields some wonderful aromas as the reaction progresses. Let's go to video two now. Just a little bit closer look at this uh, Maillard mixture. I left it uh, with air passing over for a couple of hours to take a sample and then I took it back up in water. Now I carry out continuous extraction next. So typically what I'll do is uh, dissolve this Maillard mixture. It's readily soluble in water and uh, I'll contact it with a polar solvent, dichloromethane, methylene chloride, rather low boiler non-soluble, really basically immiscible with water, and I'll heat that up in a continuous extractor for 24 to 48 hours. And after that time, I'll evaporate the uh, solvent, the organic solvent, and analyze the residue. It really makes things a little easier for characterization. So what I'll do is write down what solvent I used, how long, and what did I pull out, and it's so much easier to analyze uh, one or two or three components versus perhaps 50 or 100. And then I'll try different solvents. And uh, I also will carry out the same process with uh, other sugar amino acid partners. And I'll also, uh, I've done this already, I will subject whey protein hydrolysate, which contains almost all of the 20 amino acids and some di and tripeptides, and heat that up with sugars and uh, see what type of complex components are formed under those conditions. Here's the continuous extractor. Here you see the upper layer and that's your uh, um, aqueous solution of the Maillard mixture and down here is the methylene chloride and that will be heated to reflux. It'll boil. I have a condenser on top of this and then we see what we pull into the round bottom flask. This, this is where we heat methylene chloride will volatilize up, boil up, will condense up here, not shown, run through the solution and pull out over 24 to 48 hours any components 
that are even soluble to the parts per million level. Upon cooling, they'll either crash out of the methylene chloride or I'll evaporate this and uh, try to determine the structure of or structures of what was pulled out, what was extracted. I'm offering these then to the test uh, insects rates that I work with and uh, I'm interested in semiochemicals, sensory chemicals. Do these materials attract these life forms? Fiddler crab, American cockroach, land hermit crab, are they attracted to the material? Are they repelled by it? And uh, I have a microbiology colleague who will determine if microbes can actually, his selected microbes can grow on some of these uh, melaninoid pigments that are produced as an endpoint. Here's the contact information. I'm Dave Soriano. I'm an associate professor of chemistry with the University of Pittsburgh Bradford campus in Pennsylvania, USA. My email address, my phone number are there. And if you go to webcam 24-7, go to bamboozer.com and look for me, d.s.soriano. And you can see right now, I think I have a webcam using a Raspberry Pi PC and a $15 webcam. I have that uh, hooked up right now to a crab aquarium where I have a land hermit crab. And very shortly, I'll begin to see whether it uh, is attracted to the various Maillard mixtures that I offer it. So I have other YouTube videos on this subject uploaded. Continue to follow what we put there. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Hey, thanks for watching. Bye now.